Number one tells us that we have automobiles start losing value or depreciating, it's called, as soon as they leave the dealership. Five years ago, a family purchased a new car that cost $16,490. If the car lost 13% of its value each year, what is the value of the car now? So when we're doing this, um, again, we want the initial value, and then we know that it's going down 13% each year. So that means if we look at 100% and we take away 13%, the car is retaining 87% of its value each year. So it's worth 87% of its original cost. And so then this as a decimal, if we divide by 100, we get 0.87. So this is our growth factor of our car. It's gonna be reducing by 13% or keeping 0.87 um, as its growth factor. So then we wanna do 16,490 times 0.87. And then um, what's the value of the car now? So they bought the car five years ago. So that's how long um, it's been. So then we'll do this to the fifth power. And when we type that into our calculator, we find out that the car is currently worth $8,218.96. Number two, the number of trees in a rainforest um, decreases by 0.5% each month. So each month we're decreasing by 0.5% and the forest currently has 2.5 billion trees. Write an expression to represent how many trees will be left after 10 years. So one thing you wanna see here is that there's a mismatch in um, the time. So this one is saying it decreases per month and this is saying in 10 years. So when we're looking at our time to plug in, remember we want it to be in months, which matches the percent decrease. So this means that we're gonna do 10 years times 12, which gives us 120 months is what we're actually looking at here. So this is the time period. So I'm just gonna leave it at 2.5 and say billion. I'm not gonna write out the number of zeros needed for billions. Um, so the expression would be the initial amount, 2.5 billion. Then we've got to figure out our growth factor. And we're going to do this for 120 months. Now, your growth factor, remember, we're looking at it's decreasing. So it has 100% would be it's staying the same, right? It's keeping 100% of its trees. But now it's decreasing or um, going down by 0.5%. So if we do 100 minus 0 0.5, we get 99.5% um, is left over. Then when we divide this by 100 to write it as a decimal, we get 0.995 as our growth factor. So then that's going to go in here. And then we will type that into our calculator. And we get that we have 1.37 billion, make sure you write billion because we didn't actually write out the whole number here, right? So 1.37 billion trees will be remaining at the end of 10 years. Number three, from 2005 to 2015, the population of lions is modeled by the equation 1500 times 0.98 to the T where T is the number of years since 2005. How many lions were there in 2005? So you can plug zero into the equation for this if you need to use your calculator. Otherwise, remember this number out front is the initial value. So there were 1,500 lions in 2005. Then it says describe what's happening to the lions over this decade. And so we know from looking at this growth factor that 0.98 is less than one. So we know that the population is decreasing. And when we, if we wanted to go even further and say what percent it's decreasing by, um, you can take the growth factor minus one. 
and then you'd get negative 0 0.02. That negative means it's decreasing, right? So we said that here. And then if we write this as a percent, okay, so multiply it by 100, that gives you that it's decreasing by 2%. So I kind of ignored the negative here because I used that in the word decreasing. So then it's decreasing by 2% each year. About how many lions are there in 2015? Um, show your reasoning. So 2015 is um, 10 years after 2005, right? So we'll be plugging 10 into this equation. So we would be doing 1,500 times 0.98 to the 10. And when we do that, we get 1,225.61 really, but we would just round that and say about 1,226 lions. Number four, a bank account pays 0.5% monthly interest. Um, pays means it's going up, right? They're giving us that money, not taking it away. So if we have $500 put into an account, what will the balance be at the end of one year? Now remember, there's that mismatch again of monthly versus year. So this um, one year, remember, is 12 months. So we want to make sure that those match, assuming that no additional deposits or withdrawals were made. So for this, we have the initial amount, 500. Then we want to take it times our growth factor to the 12th power for 12 months. So remember, when we're looking at our growth factor here, we have this 0.5% that it's going up. So we've got our 100% of what we put in, plus we have another 0.5%. So that means we're really getting back 100.5% each month. And then again, if we divide that by 100 so that we get the actual decimal version to type into our function, we get 1.005. So that's our growth factor each month, 1.005. And if we type that into our calculator, we will get um, $530.84. So then what's the effective annual interest rate? So this means how much did you actually earn in that one year? What percent did you get in that one year? So we'll take our new total divided by our original amount. So we're going to do 530.84, and then we're going to divide by 500 to figure out the growth factor for just those 12 months, so for that one year. And when we do this, we get 1.06168. So there's our growth factor, which is like this, right? So we're trying to figure out this percent. So if we subtract off the one, we get 0 0.06168. And then that as a percent is 6.168%. So 6.17% if you wanted to round. So that's one way to do it. So you can take the new total at the end of a year divided by the original, subtract off your 100%, write it as a percent. The other way you can do that is just by taking your um, growth factor to the 12th power, and that would just give you that 1.06168 as well, and then subtract off your 100% and get that 6.17% 6, 6 also. So is the effective annual interest rate more or less than 6%, so it's more? Number five, here's the graph of three equations. Um, y equals 50 times 1.5 to the x, 50 times 2 to the x, and 50 times 2.5 to the x. Which graph matches, um, which equation matches each graph? So we obviously see that they start at the same spot, right? Which makes sense because all of these have 50 as their initial value. So then we see A here, whoops. So A here is on top meaning it's increasing the fastest, right? 
this means that it's going to have the highest growth factor. So the highest number kind of inside these parentheses are attached to the variable. So that's going to be this one. So this one is graph A. So then sim similarly, C is on the bottom. So it's increasing the slowest. So this means it's going to have the lowest growth factor of the three. So if we look at these other ones, we've got 1.5 versus 2. So that means this is graph C. And that would leave um, this one to be graph B right in the middle there. Number six, a major retailer has a staff of 6,400 employees for the holidays. After the holidays, they will decrease their staff by 30%. How many employees will they have after the holidays? So kind of two different ways you can think about this. So you wanna know how many employees they'll have. So we're not figuring out how many necessarily they're reducing by, but how many they're gonna keep. So if they are losing, so if they're losing 30%, that means they're keeping 70% because that totals 100%. So that means we could think about it like this, 6,400 times 0 0.7, 70% as a decimal, um, and that would tell us how many employees they will be keeping, which is 4480. Um, if you want to do it in the losing, think about it as losing, okay, you could do 6,400 times 0.3, and this would give you um, how many employees they're losing. So if we do 6,000 times 0.3, we find out that they're losing 1,800, um, that's wrong, 6,400 times 0.3, we get that they're losing 1,920 employees. So this is the number they're losing. So then we'd have to do 6,400 minus 1920, and that would get us to that 4480. So kind of two different options there on how you might think about that. Number seven, 10 students guessed the number of cubes in a jar that contained 202 cubes. Their names and guesses are listed in the table. Create a scatter plot with the guesses as the horizontal value and the absolute guessing errors as the vertical. So we need to come up with the absolute guessing error. I'm just going to call it AGE. And you do that by taking the number minus 202 or 202 minus the number. Um, so really, it's the absolute value of the guess minus 202. So how far away is 205 from 202 is essentially what we're saying. So 205 is 3 away. 190 is 12 away. 197 is 5 away from 202. 200 is 2 off. 220 is 18 off. 210 is 8 off. 202 is exactly correct, so that has an error of 0 because it's the exact right answer. 203 is one away, 99 is three away, and 185 is 18 away. So you subtract this 202 from this number and do the absolute value or the positive value of it. Then you're gonna plot these, okay? So I'm just gonna plot a couple of these and then I'll show you the answer. So if we go to 205, okay, and these are counting by fives, right? 180, 85, 90, 95, 200, 205, we want to go up to three. At 190, we want to be at 12. Okay, and you would just plot all of those and it's going to look like this. 